Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. Today I'm going to do something totally different. I'm Darren, I'm your host, and today I'm going to do a beef shoulder clod. I've been wanting to do one of these for a long time, but I finally found one. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Alright guys, if you're not familiar with what a shoulder clod is, it's actually what it, what it sounds like. It's actually the big piece of shoulder from the, uh, from the steer and actually it has a few cuts in here. It's mostly from the chuck section, so this has mostly got pieces of uh, what you would consider chuck roast. It also has the terrace major roast that's inside all this big uh, mass of meat. Um, usually you would cut the, the terrace major or petite uh, tender out of this big chunk of meat and then the rest of it you can cut up into stew meat or chuck roasts or other little roasts but i'm not going to do that today i'm not going to break this thing down i might do that uh, in another video i actually found this at the costco business center over in orlando which is about an hour and a half from me i normally can't find these at the regular costco the costco business centers are set up a little different there's only about a handful of them around the country, but they usually will carry things that you can't find at a normal Costco. They'll carry bigger items, they'll carry case uh, quantities of different meats and all that, because um, they're geared more towards the restaurant business or, or business people. So I happened to stumble in there and I found this and I said, hey, I'm gonna pick this up and cook it. I'm just gonna cook it on the grill, on the smoker today. We're gonna do it on the Weber smoke fire because I don't want to have to feed uh, either of my other uh, smokers uh, while, I'm, while I'm doing other stuff today. So I'm going to put it on the pellet grill on the Weber smoke fire and let this thing cook. We're going to cook it at 260 degrees and we're going to cook it like you would a brisket. But first of all, what I'm going to do is get this thing trimmed up. It does have a good amount of uh, fat here on the outside. So I'm not going to bore you with me trimming it up. I'm going to go trim this up. Then I'm going to come back, show you how I'm going to season it up and go over what we're going to do with it. I'll be back, guys. All right, guys, I got this thing all trimmed up. Now, this was a good uh, 28 or so pounds. And at 289 a pound, it's actually pretty reasonable. I cut maybe uh, three quarters of a pound to, to a pound of fat off of here. I trimmed up a lot of the granny skin. This is the fat cap side, so just like a brisket. It does have a big uh, fat cap side here. So I did trim most, most of the uh, granny skin on here. I left about uh, a, little, a little bit of fat on this side, of course. And that's the side we're going to have facing the fire. And uh, I'll flip this over. So this is the side that um, didn't have as much fat, but it had a bunch of silver skin on here. So I did trim a bunch of that. Now, as you can see, I'm going to get you up close here so you can really take a look at this cluster of muscles here so you can actually see what this thing is. Like I said, this is part of the shoulder, so it's a good chunk of the shoulder, and that's why it's called shoulder clod. And it's a group of different muscles here. So as you can see, you, got, you can see where the muscle seams are here. There's a few of them. This is also part of the chuck, like I said. But if you see this right here, this actually is your terrace major, which is also your petite tender. So this actually gets kind of, it's very, it's second only, I think, to the tenderloin as far as tenderness goes. Now, a lot of times people will cut this out and, uh, you know, eat it on its own. I'm going to go ahead and just cook this whole thing by itself. I'm going to cook the whole thing together. I'm just, I wanted to cook this thing whole because I've seen it done before and I've always wanted to do it. When I go back to Costco and they have some of these, I might go ahead and do a video on breaking this whole shoulder clod down just so you can see the different pieces of it. But like I said, as you can see, you can see where some of the seams of the muscles are here and you could actually break this thing down into a few different pieces. Most of it is um, uh, tougher meat. So it only has that one piece there that, that's kind of, kind of, that is the most tender piece. But everything else in here is tough. So we're gonna cook it. I'm gonna cook it at 260 degrees. We're gonna cook it up to an internal temp of right around 200 or so. 
and we're going to monitor it. So I'm going to season it up today with Meathead's red meat um, seasoning here. I got a bunch of this from, from Meathead from Amazing Ribs. He sells his own rubs now. And I've used this a few times on brisket and some other stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put this on, on it today. And that's what we're going to use to season this thing up. So I'm hoping this will be done within eight hours or so. So we're going to see. But um, if I have to, I might kick the temperature up a little bit to get it done. But I know some of this, like I said, since it has some tender, more tender pieces in here, that a lot of it's going to be tender. So I'm hoping that the uh, tougher stuff will actually catch up to the tender stuff and it won't be too bad. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and season this up. Pretty easy. I'm just going to put a generous amount on both sides here. I don't use any binders. I just, this has got plenty of moisture on it to... Uh, keep the rub tacked on there. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a nice generous amount on both sides here. And I'm not going to bore you with me season this whole thing up. I'm just showing you what I'm going to be doing and what I'm using. And I'll be back when I'm putting this thing on the smoker. All right, guys, my smoker is up to temp. It's been up to temp for a good 10 minutes. I'm going to show you here. I got a water pan in there and that's mostly to drip and catch the fat but it's also going to add some moisture here to the uh, cooker. I'm going to put the clod right over the pan and I'm also putting it fat side down like I said and the reason is because the fire is actually even though it's a convection cooker it's still coming up mostly from the bottom and that's going to protect the meat from burning on the bottom. I'm going to put the rest of my any rub that's on my pan in there. And that's pretty much it guys. We're going to go to close this thing up and uh, let it run. I'm going to put my probe in here. I'm going to put it right in the middle and we're going to monitor it. Once it starts getting closer to 200 degrees on the internal temp we're going to take a look at it see how it is. All right, I'll be back, guys. All right, guys, it's been in there a good six and a half hours. I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and I think I'm going to take it out and wrap it. It's sitting at about 150 degrees now for a little while, so I think it's right at about the stall, and we're going to wrap it in foil. I'm not going to use butcher paper because I want this to kind of cook a little quicker. So I'm going to use uh, butcher paper, or not, I'm going to use foil instead of butcher paper. But, ooh, check out the bark on that thing. That looks pretty good. I think it's ready. I think the bark set pretty well. Still got some juices coming out of it. But I'm going to go ahead and take this out. We're going to wrap it in foil with a little beef broth and put it back on. I'll be back. All right, guys. As you can see, this is still a big old hunk of meat. And I'm going to put a little beef broth in here. Moisten it up some so I can braise. Probably a little bit more than a cup. I want to keep most of it in there. I'm going to have to use a few pieces of foil because like I said this is a really big old piece of meat. have it guys I'm gonna put it back on the smoker put the probe back in and hopefully this will be done within three hours I'll be back oh, all right guys this thing I think it's done we're gonna go ahead and take this out of the foil I did crank the heat up there after a little while just to um, get it to move along I don't think I really needed it to get over 200 since we've got some tender meat in here and I really want it to rest a little longer but it's getting late and I want to get a piece of this off so you guys can see it but check that out guys what a hunk of meat that is I'm gonna go ahead and just cut me a piece off I'll cut some more up later with a picture at the end here so you guys can see it. But look at that, it just comes right apart. I'm 
surely is tender enough. Check out the uh, smoke ring on there. Check out the bark. I don't want to stick that whole big piece in my mouth because it'll burn my mouth. I'm going to take a piece of this. So, so tender. Mmm. Juicy, too. Tender, juicy. This cut is really good to do uh, pulled beef with as well. If you got um, a party coming up and you want to do a bunch of pulled beef, get a shoulder clod. Get a couple. This could feed probably about 20, 25 people or so, just one of them, maybe 30, depending how big eaters they are. But you can see it's pulling right apart, guys. Didn't really need to get up to 200 degrees for it to be nice and tender. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you follow the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. And I will see you again on the next Fire and Water Cooking video.